please mute yourself if you're not speaking. And if you are, unmute yourself. And I would like it if uh, at the end of this meeting, if our fellow jesters can stay on the Zoom call for just a few announcements. So um, just don't run away right as we end the meeting. So I would like to start the meeting by thanking everybody for joining us this morning. And I'd like to welcome you to the Rotary Club of Healdsburg Sunrise's 11th annual Teacher Appreciation Breakfast or Recognition Now. I'm Nancy Palumbo, this year's president, and it is my honor to preside over this special event. Each year we celebrate those teachers and staff who have inspired our students and their peers and who have been nominated by the principals of the Healdsburg Unified School District and Westside Elementary School. This year's recognition holds special significance as we honor those who have risen to the challenges of educating our community's children during a pandemic, while also navigating the health, safety, financial, social, and educational concerns of their own families. As you can agree, this was no normal year. Also joining us today are our esteemed elected officials and representatives who have met the same challenges while guiding our communities through this pandemic in the midst of a horrendous fire season and who will make their presentations honoring our special guests. As a slight departure from the program that I sent to you, we will ask one dignitary to present their comments intended for all the honorees um, uh, prior to the introduction of one honoree, if that makes any sense. So joining us today are Senator Mike McGuire, representing California's second Senate district and new Papa. Will Tesconi, field representative for Assemblyman Jim Wood, representing the second assembly district. Jenny Chamberlain, chief of staff for James Gore, our fourth district supervisor and honorary Sunrise Rotarian. Evelyn Mitchell, mayor of Healdsburg, and Chris Vandenhubel, superintendent, who has supported this program throughout the years. And is Chris on the call? Yep, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Great. I would like to introduce Chris at this moment to uh, say a few words before we begin our official program. All right. I just want to thank you all for um, putting this on. Uh, I say this every year, but it's true. We do not, as a society, do enough to celebrate our teachers and our educators. And it's one of my favorite events because of that. You guys just do such a fantastic job honoring them and um, making them feel special and appreciated. And this year, more than any other, is the year to appreciate our teachers and, and our counselor, our educators. Um, as Nancy said, we've had a crazy year, not only with the pandemic, but with wildfires um, here in Sonoma County. In fact, we, we uh, canceled the second day of school um, this year. That was virtual because of fire. Um, unbelievable. But um, I was thinking about how to describe what education, what our educators have done this year. Um, and there's no way I can do it succinctly in just a few minutes, but I, I came up with three words and I wanted it to be something that stuck with you. So they all start with the letter P. Um, the first is they've pivoted. Um, we have reinvented school um, three or four times in the last 14 months. You know, we went into pandemic, did virtual learning right away. Um, and then this fall, as we realized we weren't coming back anytime soon, we had to kind of reinvent how to better engage our kids because we were seeing students not show up like we wanted them to. Um, and then finally, I, I'm pleased to share at Healdsburg Unified School District, we were one of the first to reopen as a, as a district um, and have our kids come back. Westside was right there with us. And, um, and our teachers had to, once again, reinvent how to do school um, with half their students in class, half their students out of class, many of them simultaneously teaching both. Um, and so they have pivoted, they have pivoted, they have pivoted, and they have uh, basically had to build the plane as it's flying. Um, and then throughout that all, they've persisted. I have seen, you know, Aida Pacheco making home visits pictures uh, last year of her kindergartners graduating from their porches with her and a little backdrop she made to take pictures of them. Uh, Kelly Mace has chased my own son, a senior who not only has senioritis, but really just has come to a place where he can't do Zoom. Um, I have teachers 
calling parents, chasing kids down to figure out which parent they're with or have they moved, um, just doing everything they can to make sure students are showing up, that they're engaged and that they're learning throughout the course of this year. And then finally, the passion that has come through. We are overjoyed to have our kids back in school. There's not one educator who didn't have an amazing first day of school in our district, seeing the whites of their eyes in the classroom again. I was just in HES yesterday, um, seeing and walking through kindergarten classrooms and the, the kids were so excited to show me the caterpillars that were hatching out of cocoons and the chicks that were starting to hatch out of the eggs that they're raising in class. And it felt normal. And the joy that I saw in the kids' faces and the excitement on the teachers was just, amazing considering everything we've been through. So our teachers have had a crazy year. Um, you know, there's lots going on in the news around teachers right now. And, and you, you will see nationally, there's a big issue with educators leaving education because of everything they've had to go through. And I'm happy to say we haven't seen that in Hillsburg. Our, our folks have stuck with it. They're in it all for kids. Um, and their persistence, their passion, and their ability to pivot has just rung true this year. And so we're so pleased to have such an incredible team um, serving this community. And, uh, and again, thank you all for doing this. Actually, we, to be totally honest, when this was starting to be, this event was starting to be planned, it was right when we were trying to plan our reopening of schools. And, um, you know, as you can imagine, it's been a labyrinth of guidance changes constantly from one day to the next, you can do this, but you can't do that. And then it would be the complete opposite the next day from public health. And so we were a little slow getting back to Rotary and saying, yes, let's do this. But when, when we finally did, I said, please, 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 never has this event been more important. Our teachers deserve the recognition. We wanna celebrate them. And uh, again, thank you for doing this. It's a bummer we have to be on Zoom. I know everybody is sick of Zoom, but our teachers spend countless hours. So they're, they've gotta be more burned out than anybody um, on the computer screen. And I cannot wait to be with you guys next year in person, having breakfast together and celebrating the next group of fantastic educators in Hillsburg. So thank you so much. And uh, it's just such a pleasure to be here with you all. Chris, thank you. And it was really gratifying to get that message from you saying, please, please, let's do this. And um, we were, that was just thrilling. So, and thank you for your words. So at this point, we will begin our program. Um, let's see. I would like, oh, I want to let everybody know that along with the check for $500 to each teacher, uh, each, each and counselor, each nominee will receive a plaque with a special inscription along with commendations from each of our state and local representatives. And um, Mark Bisignani, the committee chair, will uh, mention a little bit more about this I just closing comments. Yeah. Oh. I, I just have one of the plaques right here. Uh, and I will, for one of the teachers, and I will just read the brief inscription. The Rotary Club of Hillsburg Sunrise Teacher Appreciation Ward, May 5th, 2021, in recognition of outstanding service. And we have one of these for uh, each of our five uh, teachers, along with, as Nancy said, uh, a check for $500 and the proclamations from our uh, distinguished elected uh, officials. And I'll, we'll, we'll explain in a bit how we will get these to you, uh, to all of our awardees. Thanks, Mark. So to kick things off, Senator McGuire, will you please say a few words and um, introduce our, and then at that point I will introduce our first principal. Thank you so much, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, I just want to say thank you for allowing both uh, Pat Sabo, who I'm honored to work with each and every day, and I to be with you today. I also want to say thank you to Hillsburg Sunrise for carrying on this tradition, especially in this year of all years. Uh, we are both grateful to be with you. Um, especially in what has been one of the most challenging years in our lifetimes and during the largest public health crisis that this nation has faced in over a century, um, we want to say thank you. Thank you to our teachers and our counselors. Uh, teachers and counselors have a, a tough job on a good day. Let's just be candid. But during this pandemic, Hillsburg's educators have truly gone the extra mile for our kids. Uh, every student, every student, has been on their radar to ensure their success, whether ensuring their success on Zoom, delivering homework packets to homes, meeting with parents and kids who need extra attention, 
checking in on their students' mental health. Teachers have not missed a beat, especially now. We wanna say thank you to Kelly, to Gloria, to Irma, to Ida, to Teresa. We are so incredibly grateful. Grateful for you, grateful for your tireless work, your commitment to our kids, and for going to the mat, going to the mat for Hillsburg students, this year in particular. So on behalf of Assemblymember Jim Wood, uh, we wanna be able to recognize your amazing work on behalf of our kids uh, and recognize you with a special golden certificate that has been signed on behalf of the entire California legislature. We are so honored to be with you and also honored to recognize your amazing work on behalf of our students. And again, Madam President, thank you so much for allowing me to be with you today and to all the Rotarians. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, and the certificates are beautiful. They've got the California poppy on them, really nice. So thank you so much. And, and again, congratulations on being a new father. Thank we you. gotta see that, that little baby free. here pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Um, at this moment, we would like to introduce our first principal, Bill Halliday, who will be uh, introducing his nominee, Kelly Mace, counselor at Hillsburg High School. Thank you and good morning, Sunrise Rotary. And like um, Chris and Mike shared with you, I wanna uh, send my appreciation out for continuing with this event. This is one of the highlights of the year that we get to honor our, our teachers and this year in a unique year, we get to honor our counselor. And it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce Kelly Mays to you. Um, this nomination is a little bit different. You know, Teacher of the Year, we nominate our, our lead counselor, Kelly Mays, for the role. But this nomination comes from a place where in this year, the need for quality, emotional, and academic and organizational support for our school and our students has never been more pronounced. And quite simply, Kelly stepped up to the task and excelled this last school year, this last school year and a half since last March, um, ensuring that services were continuing to be provided to our students and ensuring that we kept our eye on student well-being and kept our eye on student progress and academic support. Um, Kelly did everything from home visits to one-on-one -on -one visits to Zoom calls that went from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. on any given day. I've never seen a counselor and a counseling department, quite frankly, work as hard and as focused as they did this school year. Um, but I wanna kind of focus on four things that Kelly brought to us throughout the course of this year. First is quite frankly, pushing the staff, me included, to empathize and understand the challenges that our students and families were undergoing this year. It's easy to fall back into a traditional mode when we're providing educational services for kids. And when we went to distance learning, we had parts of our community that quite frankly, were trying to do the same thing through Zoom that they would do in a classroom. And Kelly was the voice to say, why are we trying to do the same thing when the situation is quite different and we need a different approach and a different strategy. And that different approach and different strategy comes from a deep empathy and understanding for, again, the challenges that our students and families are going through. And she really took the lead with that and helped um, change the school's mindset. The second thing I wanna recognize about Kelly is non-traditional problem solving. Her question was always, why are we looking at it through this lens when the world is different? We should look at how we solve a problem through what we're experiencing right now, not how we've done it in the past. And that again was a great question and a great voice that she brought forward. The third part about Kelly that our community has great respect for is she always had an eye on equity and student voices. What are the students telling us? Let the students lead. Have we talked to our seniors? Have we talked to our leaders? Have we talked to our struggling students about what they're experiencing before we make a decision based on what the adults in the room think is best for, for the kids? And always, are we thinking from an equitable lens? Is this pathway, is this course offering, is this presentation um, equitable in how it provides resources and information to our community? Um, and the last part is that I've been fortunate to be here for four years. Kelly's been at the high school for five years and I've just watched her incredible growth from all of us a quality student-centered K 
counselor and hardworking counselor to becoming one of the true leaders on our campus that's held in high regard and her approach to counseling and services to kids is respected throughout the building. It's been a great pleasure to see that growth over the last four years. And once again, pleasure and honor really to honor you this morning and thanks for, all, for everything. Wow, very powerful. I can understand why you chose Kelly. I I'm going to have to run and get some tissues here in a minute. Um, Kelly, would you like to say a few words? We'd love to meet you. Hi, and good morning. Um, I'm still in shock over this nomination. I just kind of come in and do my job and, you know, put everything I have into it. Um, so I'm um, just honored and, you know, grateful. This has been a really tough year. Um, I think we've all had to, like Chris said, pivot. I've never pivoted more in my life. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm grateful for this nomination and thank you all and for everything that you do. It's um, It's been difficult, but um, this, I think, you know, in, here in Healdsburg, we do it for the students and I, you know, so that's why I do it. And it's been, that's been helpful this year to get through. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome and thank you for all that you do. I'm sure the, the parents and the students at Hillsburg High are grateful for your, your service above and beyond. So thank you for joining us this early hour and we'll get you back pretty soon, back to those kids. Uh, okay, next we would like to introduce Will Tesconi, who is here on behalf of uh, assembly member Jim Wood. And we'd like to hear what you'd have to, what you have to say for us, Will. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, thank you to Sunrise Rotary for hosting this event. And I think it's it's all been said, said by Senator McGuire that it's just so important to have this event and appreciate your guys' time and energy and, and recognizing this important part of our community. Um, Dr. Wood definitely wishes he could be here, um, but um, he, he did pass along some comments I'm going to read off, um, but you'll, you'll notice the, the operative word today seems to be pivot. Uh, so I know we've heard that a couple of times in Chris's comments, um, but he just wanted me to pass along that, you know, that, you know, I know this has all been said before, but there's likely never been a more challenging year to be an educator and teachers have truly gone above and beyond over the past 15 months. They have worked to meet their students where they are and have tried not only to deliver the standard of education they deserve, but to foster the sense of belonging students usually find in the classroom. As they, have, as, as they have been asked to pivot over and over again to adapt to shifting guidelines, they've kept their students' needs at the heart of their work and is particularly apparent in this context as we recognize all the teachers being honored here today. Um, but yeah, and I just wanna add on this, really love this event. Sorry, it was virtual, but glad we got the opportunity to recognize their, their work that it is always important, but so important this last year and, and looking forward to next year where hopefully Dr. Wood and I can be there in person as well. And thank you guys again for, for organizing this. You're welcome. Thank you, Will, for being here again this year. You, you helped with this last year and we really appreciate your stepping in for Dr. Wood, who is doing great things in the assembly. I've been hearing about him on NPR. It's amazing. Great, great news. Uh, for our second nominee, Chris Miller, principal of the junior high school. I would like to introduce you at this moment, who will introduce Gloria Hurtado. Thank you. Uh, it is an absolute honor to present uh, Gloria Hurtado to you this morning uh, as our nomination, our nominee for uh, Hillsborough Junior High School Teacher of the Year. Uh, Gloria is an inspiration. Chris, we lost your sound. And relationship builder. And above all, she's an inspiration to her students. Students who are timid, shy, or reluctant to participate in other classes have no problem speaking up in Gloria's classroom. She is supportive, always creates a safe environment, both physically and emotionally, and she encourages uh, students to take a risk even when they know they're gonna make a mistake. She says that mistakes are great, they help us learn. 
And I just wanted to share one quick thing that I think really highlights a uh, student's experience with uh, Ms. Hurtado. I have the uh, opportunity to uh, speak with students frequently. And uh, sometimes they share with me what their likes or dislikes are about, uh, about our school. And one student shared uh, that they absolutely love Ms. Hurtado's class. She's their favorite teacher and that's her favorite class. And I asked, why is that? I said, you know, she doesn't just tell you what to do. You're there and she's talking to you and she makes you talk. And she's like, she tricks you into learning. Uh, and that was just such a great, uh, such a great uh, quote from a student that uh, I really think sums up just uh, her talent and her level of inspiration for students. So. Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to honor such a great and amazing teacher that we are blessed to have at Hillsborough Junior High School. Thank you so much, Chris. And Ms. Hurtado, are you here? May we, uh, I know you're here. May we hear from you and meet you? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, yeah, just I'm super honored and humbled to be recognized in this situation and that I know I wouldn't have survived this year if it weren't for my fellow comrades here at HJH. <laughs> I think uh, definitely takes our entire team and we've got an awesome team here at HJH. So, yeah. Well, congratulations on tricking those little brains. I'm sure you will, um, they will remember you for a long time. You know, that's a very significant uh, experience for a young student. So congratulations to you. All right. We would like to now introduce Ms. Jenny Chamberlain, Chief of Staff for our fourth district supervisor, James Gore. Jenny has been with James for his duration and helping him become our supervisor. So Jenny, if you will, Join us. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see people on Zoom. Some of you I've met before, some of you I've never met, so it's a pleasure. But on, on behalf of our office and Supervisor Gore, um, I just want to thank our teachers for the dedic their dedication and resilience. And not just for this past year in terms of COVID. If you think about it, for the past four to five years, our teachers and our students um, have gone through floods, fires, power shutoffs, COVID. And hopefully it ends here, right? But with that being said, I, I, I want to thank you for your adversity and your perseverance. Because in, in times like these, if you think about someone who's in first grade or second grade, our students every year continuously have had something go on um, in their lives. But you as the teachers have been a, a pillar and a foundation for these students to, to lean on, not just within their own family units, but within, within your classroom. And we want to honor and recognize that today. You've also set an example of character, perseverance, and not just within our children, but the families that they live in. And, um, you know, there's often times where I, my boss is on these Zoom calls, and I think many of you know he has uh, two kids. And the kids just kind of pop in through Zoom sometimes. I'm like, oh, the kids must be in break from class, from um, online class. So, uh, but I, I don't know how you manage it all. I have a foster son and his teacher manages to meet with me once a week or every other week. And every time I listen to her speak, I mean, she shares what she's doing and what she's doing within my foster son situation. I can't imagine how she does it and how you all do it, meeting with parents on a regular basis and also doing the work in teaching. So on behalf of not just our office, not Supervisor Gore, but all of every single person in our community, thank you for your work. We are very gracious. We are, um, we are very blessed to have you all. Thanks. Jenny, thank you so much. And thank you. Thanks Supervisor Gore for uh, letting you be here today. And yeah, your, your description of the kids popping in and out, it's, um, We've all gotten used to that. So we got to know everybody's families and, and pets. Um, and so at this time, I would like to introduce Jeff Franey, 
who is the principal of Hillsburg Elementary School First Street Campus, and he will introduce Aida, Aida Pacheco, who is a lead, the lead teacher and tutorial coordinator. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. It's extremely exciting to be able to, um, to highlight all of the work that Aida has, has done. Um, I, I feel like it's long overdue as she has been, she's held a, a number of, of different roles in, in Healdsburg Unified School District. Um, I wanted to share a quick, quick story of, about Aida and her relentless efforts to, to push her students. Um, there was a student in her class that had a clipboard that wasn't participating in a, in a fun activity that the, her class was doing for Day of the, um, the Child, which we were celebrating earlier this week. Um, I asked the student, you know, what, why, why aren't you participating? And she, she told me straight up, she said, I didn't finish my work, so I can't participate in this activity. Eventually, she was included in the activity. And I, I felt a little bad for her, but it kind of it goes to, uh, it speaks to, to Ms. Pacheco's uh, advocacy for her students. She understands that there are skills and, and, and things that students need that are going to take precedent over anything else. Um, she pushes those around her uh, on a daily basis, both the adults and the students uh, each day in her own relentless efforts to, to get better. Uh, she is extremely strategic. If you can look at uh, the background in Ms. Uh, Aida's uh, Zoom screen right now, it looks extremely pretty. But I will tell you, each piece of material on that wall serves a purpose. Uh, she's a, a huge leader at our school. Uh, I'm extremely excited that she is uh, getting this honor. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and let Aida take over from here. So thank you, everyone, for this. And, and thank you, Aida. You're a, you're a, a huge uh, leader at our school and definitely appreciate having you here. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, welcome, Aida. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Jeff, for those words. Uh, first and foremost, let me tell you that I love my profession. You know, I could state with certainty that one of the biggest rewards that I have is seeing that little twinkle in each of the kids' eyes as they, you know, meet not only like their academic goals, but just when they unveil their passions and they realize, oh, I really like, you know, math. I really like building things. I really like expressing myself and writing. And so that is my biggest reward when I'm here, when I work with the kids. Um, I've done this for over 20 years and I have no regrets, maybe just getting up this early for recognitions, but, <laughs> but it's a long time coming. So I, I, I it's well deserved. Thank you. Uh, I really, I really do appreciate that, that continual opportunity to witness, you know, this generation and many generations to come uh, build themselves with, uh, amongst each other, with each other, uh, being resilient, being perseverant, you know, if they can, I can with COVID, with Zooming, with, you know, being technologically savvy now, <laughs> you know, those challenges, I, that's what I would tell myself every day. If they can, I can. And, um, and that perseverance and that resilience, once again, you know, it's, we're using these words, but they're, they're truly valuable and they do um, show what we can do when we're pushed, you know, and challenged to overcome um, all this adversity that we've had to for several years now. So um, with that said, I would like to also accept this recognition on behalf of so many other educators that have come and gone that haven't had this opportunity, uh, some of which have been my mentors. So thank you for um, doing this Sunshine Rotary. Thank you HUSD for um, deciding to make it happen. <laughs> and thank you to all my peers and um, to the children that are really also my teachers and um, keep me humble because they bring some challenges with them sometimes. And I'm like, oh, I got to figure this one out. And so um, again, thank you. <laughs> I'm honored. You're welcome and congratulations. And you make me think about the um, our Rotary International theme for this year, it's Rotary Opens Opportunities. And uh, who knew that we would be having to learn all this technological stuff. So we're right there with your um, with your kids learning all of this. So thank you for the words and congratulations for all your hard work. 
All right, we would like to now hear from our esteemed mayor of Hillsburg, Evelyn Mitchell. Oh, thank you, Madam President and Sunrise Rotary. I am so proud to be here today and grateful that I was invited. Um, there, this has been a tough year for all of us, uh, clearly, and there are uh, a number of things that a mayor gets to do that are uh, not so much fun, and this is not one of those things. This is an amazing opportunity, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, there are a lot of wonderful things about Healdsburg, and our educators are at the top of that list, so uh, I just want to say that and thank you. Um, you know, as everybody has stated, this has obviously been a really, really tough year and for, uh, for all of us, but in particular for, for, for teachers and for students and for their families. So I'm really impressed with, with how you all have pivoted and continued and, and what comes out of it is a lot of creativity and perhaps new ways of looking at our work and our, our learning system. So um, I think that's important. I didn't really start my education until I had been working for four or five years. And then I went back to school part time at night. Um, and I really got sparked by the teachers that I met in, in college. So uh, and then I went on eventually to get a master's degree. So, uh, you know, I love I love learning. I love school. Um, but but the reason for that is are the teachers so uh, and other students as well. So uh, it's a profession that nurtures and sparks learning and helps launch careers uh, and the guidance and patience and the high expectations, I think, are really help empower everyone, us, our students uh, with the traits they need to be successful in their lives. So uh, thank you for everything you do and uh, congratulations on this really well deserved recognition. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hopefully we can get you back to our one of, one of our meetings and hear what's going on on our council. Um, at this moment, I would like to introduce Sue Simon, who is the backup principal at Hillsburg Elementary School, Fitch Mountain Campus. She is stepping in for Mrs. McGuire, who is on maternity leave, as we know, and she will be introducing her, um, Miss, Mrs. McGuire's nominee, Irma Figueroa, third grade teacher. So Sue, why don't you uh, join us, please? Thank you, <clears throat> and good morning, everyone. Um, I um, have been a, a retired school administrator for many years, and when I was given the opportunity to or asked to step in and, and help out at Fitch Mountain. Um, at first, I wasn't sure. I've, I've been away from schools for a couple of years. And then I decided uh, for many reasons that I was curious about how things would go. And um, it's been a real honor to step in for er Erica McGuire and, and uh, at this wonderful campus. Uh, on my first day at the campus, which was before we started back to school, April 1st, I was wandering around trying to get my bearing and I looked out on the blacktop and there's a series of uh, lunch tables where the kids eat. <clears throat> and I noticed that probably at least half the staff was out there scattered at least six feet apart from each other with balloons and celebratory feelings. And it's like, oh, this is an interesting staff. What's going on here? And they had figured out a way to celebrate Irma for her recognition by, by your group. And I thought, this is sweet. This is a school that's got some soul. And in spite of uh, you know, what's going on in these difficult times, there's still this sense of um, celebration and that everything's going to be OK. And so I think that's a uh, spirit that Irma engenders from others and that um, she has herself. She's been a teacher in the Hillsburg School District for 32 years and actually started as a and I didn't know this started as a student teacher in the district and never left. And that's pretty amazing career-wise to, to be recognized so immediately for how wonderful you are and, and, and to stay put. And so she has taught over that 32 years, I think every, excuse me, every elementary uh, grade level. She's currently teaching um, third grade STEM at FMC. Additionally, she's taught summer school almost every year, uh, with the exception of three or four during those, those 32 years. 
she shows, and this Erica had written this, um, she shows incredible, incredible dedication to her students being amongst the last to leave campus. She's a collaborative colleague who exudes warmth and always has a smile on her face. Ir Irma also stands out for her willingness to try new things, doing it all with a positive, positive attitude, excuse me, I've got allergies, uh, that is infectious. She's extremely dedicated to her students. From colleagues, Irma is truly one of the most compassionate, competent, and motivated teachers I have ever had the privilege of working alongside. Her compassion towards students is first and for foremost. She always speaks calmly and quietly and her students know how much she cares for them. She gives her utmost to keep her students engaged and holds her expectations very high. She's an exceptional colleague as well. She never hesitates to take on leadership roles within her third grade teacher team. Irma has been a mentor to several colleagues. They so appreciate what she does for them. Irma's passion for education, along with her commitment to students, success is inspiring. Her enthusiasm for learning engages her students and motivates them to do their best each day. Irma is encouraging, supportive, patient, and kind. From one student, Mrs. Figueroa is the best teacher ever. You're cool for a teacher. You're the best math teacher. So congratulations, Irma. It's an honor for me to introduce you. Thank you so much, Sue. I'm sure Erica will be very grateful for your wonderful presentation. May we meet Mrs. Figueroa? Um, I'm right here. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the the recognition. I feel super honored. I wasn't really expecting this, but I want to give a shout out to all the teachers because I think everybody deserves, all teachers deserve to be Teacher of the Year this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for, for everything you've done. I, I, I find it interesting. I haven't met you over these 30 years. I've had to run through that school. So anyway, it's wonderful to meet you and thank you so much. All right, so we will now, I, I have, we are out of dignitaries, but we will introduce Chris Menlove, who will now introduce her nominee, Teresa Brooks. Well, thank you so much to the Rotary for hosting this event. Um, I agree with what Chris had said earlier that having this event is even more important during um, this school year. You know, Teresa and I have joked about the word unprecedented. Um, we've really kind of focused on it's been an unprecedented year. What I'd like to focus on is it's been an unprecedented teaching experience. And we've seen teachers do unprecedented things for children this year. They have pushed themselves in ways that were unimaginable. Um, and to be quite honest, um, a little bit of unfair, unfair for our teachers. Um, and I just wanna say thank you to Teresa, um, who exemplifies what it means to have a growth mindset and what it means to be a teacher during this time frame. Um, what a teacher is, is more important than what that person teaches. And Teresa exemplifies that. So at the end of the day, 12 years from now, someone's probably not going to remember Greek or Latin roots that were taught on a certain day. They may not even remember, for instance, a science lesson. But what they will remember is what Teresa is. And Teresa is a strong woman. She's confident. She's kind. She's knowledgeable. Her classroom's engaging. Um, you know, you go in there and you might be greeted by Pico, her bird. Right. Um, you might even get to um, in the past have seen one of her rats um, in the classroom and she's respected. Staff members um, appreciate her input. They appreciate how she's able to see the other side of um, any sort of situation. 
you know, she's been teaching over 16 years and she's always learning. So during this time frame, she's had to embrace technology, just like a lot of teachers have had to do. And she's really been able to choose technology that is relevant and engaging and promotes learning as opposed to just filling a void. Um, she's dynamic, she's positive. Anybody who interacts with her knows that she has an infectious laugh. She loves life. And that really comes forth in the lessons that she gives to her students. She's a make it happen kind of person. You know, we had um, a sixth grade promotion last year that was a little different, but boy, she busted it out. We got the signs for the lawns. We got the t-shirts with all the kids' signatures on it. She coordinated the individual cakes. We had each student really have a fanfare um, when they came to pick up their certificate. And so I just want to say that she, during this time frame has really shown us what it is to be a teacher. And I just wanna say thank you. It's been my absolute pleasure to work with her. Um, and I know that families feel the same way and so do our staff members. And so with that, I would love to introduce Teresa Brooks as the West Side Teacher of the School for this year. Teresa, all you. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Chris. You know, uh, we have a special little campus and staff and support for our, our administration. And it's a fantastic place to show up to every day. You know, when you get to walk into a room of kids that are just waiting to learn experience and, and it, it really uh, can bring a lot of joy to, to myself, but I think it, it's just a wonderful place to be. And I do, I do appreciate the opportunity to go there every day. Um, I'm just looking forward to this world where I can get kids back, back out and then experiencing new things, whether it's art museums and science museums and getting them back in the world of Yosemite and nature. And so I'm hoping for that fantastic year next year. And just thank you to the Rotary Club. You know, I have a long history at the Rotary Club. I was an exchange student way back in the early 80s to Japan and had an exchange student at my home. Thanks to Andy, helped me out with that. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, a, it's a great group. So thank you so much for all you do. And I feel like a special shout out to that Mrs. Sabo down there for all of her teaching. <laughs> and my kids loved her and learned so much from her. So thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa, and congratulations. This is really um, heartwarming. You all have been just lovely sitting there watching everybody shower wonderful words on you. And I, uh, I think you are all very deserving in this year, especially. So. Thank you for all you do and for being here this morning. So um, we have another, uh, we're gonna have one more recognition and I would like to turn this meeting over to Andy Esquivel, our beloved Rotarian. Good morning, everyone. And uh, congratulations to the teachers and the uh, counselor that we recognize this morning. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, what you do for our kids is, is amazing. Thank you. Um, but we also have two administrators that we want to say thank you as well. First of all, starting with uh, Bill Halliday. As most of you know, Bill is retiring this year. Uh, so we want to say thank you to him for his years of service. Uh, personally had experiences with Bill as a parent. Uh, our youngest daughter, Emma, uh, was with Bill at the junior high and then as well as well at the high school. And uh, worked with Bill over the years with the Interact Club, Hillsburg Wrestling, Hillsburg Wrestling Club, a number of different things. Uh, so I want to say thank you to Bill. And uh, hopefully it's not goodbye. Just want to say thank you. And hopefully we see him in the neighborhood. Uh, also, as I'm sitting here uh, looking at these little boxes, I, I realized that Chris Menlove is, is also leaving this year. Uh, one of my family members happens to be working with Chris. Uh, so I've gotten to know about Chris and her good work out at, at Westside. And I think uh, Chris is going to leave some big shoes to fill. But I understand there, there is the draw of a grandchild uh, somewhere in Arizona. So that, that is a hard draw to, to ignore. 
So thank you also to Chris for your contributions to our community. And uh, it'll be harder to see you in the neighborhood, but um, hopefully that, that opportunity arises. So thank you to both of you. Good luck in your retirement, everybody. It, it is all it is cracked up to be. I will admit that. Thank you, Andy. So as we move through our, uh, our presentations, I would like to turn the meeting over to Mark Bisignani, who is the chair of this committee this year. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everyone. And uh, just uh, wow, we've, we've, we've heard uh, the stories of uh, five amazing teachers and counselors. And uh, we at uh, Hillsburg Rotary, uh, Sunrise Rotary, would like to thank each of you uh, for your direction, your encouragement, and uh, dedication to your students. You are truly society's heroes. Um, I also want to express our deepest gratitude to all of the principals and uh, Superintendent Vanden Heuvel for your leadership and guidance in our educational uh, system, and to all of you for your heartfelt words about the, your teachers that we hear about in this meeting. And I just want to remind everyone that a program did go out with this invitation. And in that program is a very nice written profile that each principal has uh, 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 put together for their awardees and their uh, uh, wonderful profiles. And if you haven't had a chance to look at that, please do. Uh, it just gives a little more information about um, each of our awardees. It's always so uplifting and enjoyable to hear about each of you uh, and your accomplishments. The future of our young people is uh, so influenced by the relationships that you develop with your students and the way that you guide and inspire them every day. Um, I just want you to know that we will be getting the award plaques the checks and the uh, proclamations to you. I will be delivering them to each of your school offices, um, hopefully on Friday of this week. So we will be getting those to you. And uh, I just want to end with a simple quote about teaching. The, uh, the who, Whoever said this is anonymous, but I, I thought that it said a lot. Um, teaching is the one profession that creates all other professions. So think about it. And once again, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And um, I, I really appreciate all the work you did to pull this together this year, second time in a row via Zoom. And like Chris Vanden Heuvel said, hopefully we will be back in person next year. I, for one, am looking forward to that. Um, uh, Lance Cottrell just uh, is going to be putting a link to the program with the video posts on, is it on our website, Lance? Yeah, I'll be putting up a recording of this uh, meeting up on our website as well as out on our Facebook social media. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and I would just like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, congratulations to all of our recipients and special thank you to Senator McGuire, Will Tesconi, who came again for uh, Assemblyman Jim Wood, Jenny Chamberlain on behalf of James Gore, and Evelyn Mitchell, our mayor. Chris Vandenhuvel, thank you so much for your opening remarks. And we are grateful, all of we are grateful to all of you for your service to our community. Hopefully, we will see more normalcy this year with back in person school and no fires, no floods, just beautiful Healdsburg, right? So everyone, if you are, um, if you need to get to school or to work, your our meeting is concluded. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm gonna ask my fellow Rotarians to stick around for just a few minutes because we have just some business to, to conduct, but you're welcome to stay on. We are, um, open to this community and you're welcome to become a member of the Rotary Club of Fieldsburg Sunrise too. So I will conclude our meeting and thank you everyone for joining us. Pat Sabo, did, did she just go away? She is such a fun person. Um,
what I would like to do is uh, Lance. Lance wanted to spend a minute uh, talking about Fourth of July. Uh, yeah, so we're we had uh, our sort of first large uh, meeting on planning for the Fourth of July event. Started to get some people uh, offering to to chair subcommittees on various activities. We're looking at the parade, music, uh, potentially sort of a, a kids' talent show. Looking for things that we can do in a safe manner. Uh, we still don't know exactly what we're going to be allowed to do. I talked to the folks at uh, Parks and Rec in the city, and uh, they're sort of in the same boat as the rest of us waiting for guidance, uh, particularly for public events that are unticketed without restrictions on vaccination status or testing, which is exactly where we're at. So hopefully we'll get more information, but we're moving forward as though we'll be allowed to do an event that is um, at least somewhat similar to our usual events on the plaza. Definitely looks like it's going to be on the plaza uh, because we have uh, the Prune Packers playing uh, in the park. And so they'll need that uh, ahead of time. They don't want us setting up a whole bunch of stuff uh, on the field. We only have about eight weeks. Uh, so we're going to be meeting every Monday for the next uh, eight weeks going to be sending out invitations, probably do a mixture of Zoom and in-person meetings since I think pretty much all of us are vaccinated now. Uh, we've had some offers for outdoor space, but if you are interested in helping out, if you've got thoughts on activities we can do, uh, please do come to those and uh, participate. It's going to be pretty pretty big lift to get it done in time. And I think we all need to be agile because we really don't know exactly what it's going to be like until the last moment. Anybody have any um, comments or questions about the 4th of July happenings? Questions about being on the committee? Lance, you'll be sending out the invitation to everybody for Monday, the Monday right. meetings, right? Yeah, I'll put it out uh, on the um, Club Runner email so okay. that everyone will get that. Okay. Um, I'm also thinking about potentially doing a, uh, a poll and say what's happening in Healdsburg just to get a uh, take the temperature of the community in terms of what they're open to. I mean, I'm sure we'll get some strong opinions in all directions, but uh, as we remember, we got a lot of backlash on even doing the parade concept last year. Um, and I want to make sure that this is perceived as a, as a good thing that the Rotary is doing in the community rather than having a large number of people who are feeling like we're undermining the, uh, the, the health of the city. So good. Sounds good. See what kind of information we can gather on that as well. Yeah, hopefully it'll be a lot more, uh, a lot more positive response this year. I think people are, are ready. Um, great, thanks Lance. And I see that we have our esteemed Interact Club president, Chase Summer online. Chase, would you like to uh, join us? He, Chase has an announcement. Hello and happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks for introducing me. Um, so my announcement is we're working with uh, Reach for Home right now on a care package drive uh, directed at their mobile aid unit. So they sent us a list of items um, and we're going to be assembling these care packages on May 21st. So anybody from the Sunrise Rotary Club is welcome to grab any of these items and bring them to Andy's office and either just drop them off or come help assemble. Uh, the items are ace bandages, finger splints, uh, ice packs, band-aids, peroxide, cough drops, neosporin, cotton balls, and Q-tips. Um, so I could send a list of all that. I know it's a lot at once, but that's my announcement. Great. Uh, we will... Um... Yeah, if you could give that list to Andy, and we will send it out among our our uh, club. What's the deadline that you would like these delivered by? May 21st. It's a uh, Friday. Okay. And did you say bring them to Andy's office? Yes, ma'am. We're going to be using Andy's office as our drop-off point. Okay. And what is the mobile eight unit? Yeah, I was talking to... Uh, the new Reach for Home executive director, um, and three different uh, kind of components to 
uh, how they help the homeless. And this is the one that we deemed would be uh, the most effective to help out as for the Interact Club. So is it a uh, like a, a van of some kind? That, um... I'm honestly not entirely sure, but that's what I would imagine it to be like um, them driving around just uh, responding to uh, injured persons in the community or I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So I don't think I should speak on it, but. Okay. Yeah. President Nancy, I believe the, the lady that provides that service to the homeless spoke to our club. Um, I, I would, I think within the last year, um, but she that is. Jackie? Exactly. Um, that's what this is supporting. Uh, okay, great. Uh, yeah. Lance was just asking on the chat if, if we can give money and that people can go out and buy, the club can go out and buy what they need. So I'm sure that would be yeah, acceptable. That would work as well. Okay. Wonderful. Do you know what size containers you want these things or does it matter? You'll take bulk and you'll break it down? Yeah, we will be, yeah, we'll take bulk and we'll just assemble it. Okay. Any other questions for Chase? Well, we've got him. Nice map behind you, by the way. It's Thank you. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, this is definitely something I know uh, our club loves to rally behind, and we really appreciate the work that you guys are doing. You, um, in your, you stepped in for President Nadia, and you're doing a great job. So, thank you so much, Chase, for coming this morning, and we will get some supplies to you before May 21st. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I think we'll see you in a couple of weeks, right? You're a scholarship recipient. I, yep. I will be there soon. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you. Um, let's see. I saw another chat on here. Oh, somebody's already, people are already throwing money at you, Chase. So uh, we will deliver that along with supplies. It's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, you know, Diane, I... Are, is Diane Booker still on the line? I am. I'm having unstable internet, so I closed my screen down, but I'm here. So we'll see your smiling face. I, I know this is a little earlier than what I had planned because we were going to make an announcement next week, but maybe you could just tell uh, our club what is cooking for with Booker Wines so we can get ready, mark our calendars. Sure. Thanks, President Nancy. Um, so we... Um, my winery um, has a tasting room at the region um, wine bar at the Barlow Center in Sebastopol. And we are going to be the feature winery there uh, the week of May 17 through 23. And on Thursday, May 20th, sorry, I'm looking at my calendar. Um, we're going to uh, be hosting a, <coughs> um, an event, a fundraiser to raise funds for Polio Plus. So we'll be inviting um, all the local Rotary clubs. I know that there's lots of folks um, that I work with who have family in um, Santa Rosa, Sunrise, and Club. So um, we'll hopefully get the word out to the other clubs and you all can come and join us and proceeds, uh, a percentage of proceeds will go to Polio Plus that evening. So, and it's a lot, you get to drink some wine and just relax and be outdoors. Um, they don't, they just took down the tent. So we have umbrellas up and it's just kind of a nice large space. So thank you, President Nancy, for letting me share that. You're welcome. And I'm I'm excited because it kind of feels <laughs> like it could be an informal social. If we can all get over yeah. to uh, Sebastopol and, and um, have fun, drink some wine. And what, what's the time of this? Oh, that's a great question. Um, uh, I'm going to say 5 to 8 p.m. Now I'm okay. committed. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to go online and see what kind of food is being served at the Barlow so we can. Uh, it is. It's get... pretty cool. They um, the at Region you can they have like a wine wall. You just go self serve wine, and then um, with QR code on your phone, you can pull up the menus from several different restaurants, and they just bring food to you. You don't have to move. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually working out well because the Barlow is packed right now and dinner waits are often over an hour to get into a restaurant, but you can come to Regent and then they bring you food almost immediately. So that works. Well, see, Rotary opens opportunities. We can um, all have this opportunity to figure out how to 
work our mojo at the Barlow. So thanks, Diane, and for your generosity in contributing to Polio Plus. Um, Ted Calvert, where are you? Did he leave us? I'm, I'm right here, but uh, not on video. But anyway. <laughs> How's your foot? Um, it's getting better. It's going to be a little, you know, a little hike going on here. <laughs> well, we were looking forward to the hike on Saturday morning, but Ted's injury is going to delay this. So we will um, revisit our tour of the Healdsburg Preserve. So absolutely absolutely i'm looking forward to it it's um it's a wonderful place and they're adding 36 more acres the ag and open space is adding 36 more acres onto hillsburg ridge which will show you as well that will be really wonderful i i have not done the formal tour yet um chase that might be a fun thing to bring interact uh, to you know uh, probably would be more into the summertime but um We'll keep you guys in the loop. That'd be fun to have the, the club there as well. So um, does anyone else have any announcements or uh, whatever? Anything that we're forgetting? Bike tour meeting on Friday morning. That's moving uh, along. President yeah. Nancy. Yeah. On the bike tour, you all should have gotten an email with a uh, attached flyer talking about the bike tour. So we would encourage you to forward that on to people that you know that might be interested in actually attending the event and uh, uh, cycling with us in July. So if you could do that, that would be great. Yeah, it looks like it's opening up to uh, a, a live event. We're getting closer to that eventuality, right, Dan? Well, it might happen. <laughs> I know it's all still very tentative, isn't it? Yes. <sighs> okay, and uh, I know we were looking for uh, winos to um, have our next wine tasting event, and Dan has offered up his home in what early summer, unless anyone has something. But that'll be August, is what we've decided on that. Oh, okay. So we still have the opportunity for one for between else. now and then. Yeah, absolutely. So, so please let us know. Obviously, uh, sorry, Chase, we can't invite Interact to that, but a um, few more years. All right, everybody. Well, if there are no other comments, questions, announcements, we can end our meeting. Thank you so much, everybody, for your participation today and showing up and um, honoring our teachers. Have a good day.